We're just outside of Cheyenne, Oklahoma, which is going to be about two miles down that way. Now, this park was dedicated to a massacre that occurred here between the 7th Cavalry and some um, Cheyenne Indians. And the significance of this is because of Black Kettle. One of the chiefs that was probably one of the biggest architects and probably one of the most famous chiefs to push for peace. Howdy, howdy. He was a huge advocate for the coexistence between Indians and white settlers. Well, in no way so. I mean, he was born in 1807 and he participated in a lot of raids and stuff through the 1860s but he did push for peace later in his life this uh, push for peace eventually killed him now that massacre with Custer and the 7th Cavalry has been glamorized and our a good portion of our history texts but we're going to take a look at the inside of this today the events that happened and the way they happened it was absolutely horrible and this museum is dedicated to the historical accuracy of what happened that day
supposed to be a trailhead that actually leads you to the um, memorial where the actual slaughter took place. I'm going to see if I can't find that and get us up there to it. Now, I am not uh, extremely knowledgeable, but I do know that this is probably a sage bundle, which is usually uh, burned as a way to uh, cleanse the spirit. I, I'm sure I'm probably getting that wrong and somebody will tell me, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I've read in the past. Now, all this happened in November of 1868, as this says right here. Now, Black Kettle, which I believe is who this is supposed to represent, as I said earlier when I first got here, he was a major advocate for peace and coexistence. Uh, he had survived a massacre before called the Sand Creek Massacre. and But this massacre that took place, uh, the Washita Battle, although battle is not really what it was, everybody on the Indian side was sleeping. Um, Black Kettle and his wife both were killed in this uh, attack. And uh, according to the literature up at there at the uh, visitor center, for years after, uh, many years, uh, there was a stone there, which you guys probably saw towards the end of my video, commemorating the uh, 7th Cavalry's attack and their they put the stone there as a way to, I guess, brag about it. But people used to stack the skulls of the dead ponies from the from the Indians around that. And then the uh, sheriff of Roger Mills County removed the stone. And it is now sitting inside the visitor center. As you can tell, it's extremely windy today. I'm actually trying to use my body some so you can hear me which is why I'm consistently facing this way. Uh, in this type of situation, it wouldn't matter if I was wearing a, uh, a little mic or not. It really wouldn't. I'm not going to leave the camera running the whole time. I just wanted you to see the start of this, this walk, which I believe is a mile. kind of cool all along this trail you can scan this code and they play out the events that occurred at each one of these sites way in the distance there there are two mounds up on that ridge line if you follow my fingers you can probably kind of see them in the distance magpie was one of the only survivors that successfully escaped the village as custer's men started slaughtering the cheyenne he was shot in the calf, and he made it up there and was almost overcome by another cavalry man who ran him down. Uh, he did successfully kill that cavalry man with a pistol that he had, and then he took his horse and escaped, rejoining uh, his father, who was also escaping at the time. So this whole thing is paved. It looks like they kind of have the entire area mapped out with different events and as they chronologically played out, I think. So we'll just take a look around a little more. Well, like an idiot, I didn't bring an extra battery and this thing is a lot more extensive than I thought. 
So this trail splits. I'm gonna try and take them both, but I'm gonna take the pony kill site upper trail first, which is here to my right. This is where they slaughtered all of the Indians' ponies. I'm gonna bet there's probably some more kill stuff down that way, but I'm gonna go up there and I'll show you whatever I find when I get to the end. This is uh, pretty eye-opening. Absolutely gorgeous out here too. So this is the pony kill site and uh, according to the information that I just learned from this particular tidbit, over 800 horses and mules were slaughtered here. It was done as a means to destroy the Cheyenne's uh, capability to not only fight back but also destroy their way of life and their only means of, or main means of transportation I guess I should say. The bones remained here until the 1930s and they were collected and ground down for fertilizer. This was how they hunted. Much like how we get in our cars and go to the grocery store, that's how they did it. They got on their ponies and the 7th Cavalry slaughtered them all. So you just think about the smell and the sheer volume of bones that were left behind of over 800 ponies and mules those bones remained there until the late 1930s where they were collected and subsequently ground down and used as fertilizer Archaeologists have tried to find the actual campground or campsite of where Black Kettle's village was. Uh, I think they had about 300 people, women, children, warriors there. Although, truth be told, it was mostly formed um, to, you know, they wanted peace. They just wanted to get out of white man's way. Now this is a practice I didn't know about and I'm trying really hard not to get a lot of it on camera, which I shouldn't even swung my camera over there. Um, I know Buddhists do this. Uh, I think we call them prayer flags or prayer cloths. Um, they'll tie them to a tree. I think the Buddhists actually, I'm thinking of the, the ones that live up in the mountains, but uh, they'll tie these to uh, poles and ropes and I think they actually call them prayer poles as well but anyway the uh, Native Americans in this area uh, throughout this sacred ground uh, they have prayer flags tied to trees and, and other things uh, they ask that you don't photograph them or touch them or remove them which is probably what this sage is all about up here it's a beautiful place but it's a uh, sad too. It's 100% free and if any of you live in the state of Oklahoma and are close to this area which is uh, Cheyenne, Oklahoma, I strongly recommend that you come and 
visit this. Uh, bring your children. A lot of what they get taught in school, school is not 100% accurate. Um, as I said, though, I'm not a philosopher. I'm not going to take a stance one way or the other. Uh, the way these things played out, uh, you know, they you can't change them. They played out that way. Uh, we can scream to the heavens and be extremely upset that that this tragedy happened, uh, but you're not going to change it. The best you could do is learn from it. This is Roman Ryan leaving Roger Mills County.